model is to look at um, the assumptions behind Hardy-Weinberg and see what happens if they're met and if they're not met. And so we'll, we'll look at that in the next couple of uh, videos and do some um, ways of testing for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and see what's going on. And so the, the things that are built into the model um, that are, are not are not changeable or that the population is diploid so we have um, you know every individual is going to be a diploid organism um, they're going to go through sex in the sense that what we're going to do is we're going to have a gene pool model here where all the individuals we throw the genes into a, a hopper and then they assort either randomly or non-randomly depending on the conditions um, to produce the, the next generation and then the last thing is that it has non-overlapping generations, which we already talked about, is that all the individuals reproduce, and then those reproducing individuals die, and the only thing that's left in the next generation are the offspring. Um, then there are five other conditions that, um, that we'll talk about, and those are migration, mutation, um, random mating, um, and, and selection, and then also um, large population size. So what we want to do is sort of look at, at does, is the population in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium from the start? So we're going to start with an allele frequency um, and we'll just pick one at 0.3. Um, we're going to turn off the dominance and the environmental variability for the moment. Um, so we're just going to have um, the uh, additive effects and so we're going to dial in a population size of 1,000 because that's big, um, and we'll see if that's big enough. We're going to make sure that there are no migration, that mutation is off, that random mating is on, and that there's no selection. So um, basically, we'll, we'll, let's look and see what happens. So if we get set up with, with this, um, we've got a... Um, population size. We got 87, 416, 497, and our allele frequency is 0.295, which is pretty similar to our starting um, allele frequency. Now, the, the thing you can do with, with this is that there's two ways that we can look at Harding-Weinberg. So the expectations it are if, um, if the population is in Harding-Weinberg and all those assumptions are met, then allele frequencies won't change over time. So we can look at that. So we have our starting allele frequency of 0.295. Um, if we hit go, we can see that um, because there's nothing going on here, then this, this, the, this is basically the same as this. And then we, then all those individuals here will mate randomly and produce a new um, Output. So now the, the gene frequency is 0.298, very similar. We want, if we look over time, we can go for a bunch of time steps. We've got 0 0.303, 0 0.313, 0 0.327, 0 0.3385, 0 0.34. Um, and then now it's going to go, it's going back down a little bit. And so um, we've got that is staying relatively constant over time. Um, there's a little bit of fluctuation uh, mainly because it's not a, the population size is not infinite but a thousand is pretty big and it's, it's, it's changing. It's not changing very much. So um, that's one way of looking at it. Um, the other way we can do it is we can test um, whether or not the population is, is in Hardy-Weinberg by looking at um, deviations from the expected values. So if you think about if we have a population size or an allele frequency of 0.295, then the expected genotypic fre frequencies are going to be 0.295 square for our A1, A1 individuals, um, 0.295 uh, times 0.705 times 2 will give us the population, the, the frequency of the heterozygotes, and 0.705 squared will give us a, a frequency here. 
Um, and if you just multiply all those by a thousand, you should get that. So let's look at um, what that looks like, and we can test that on our model here by using a chi chi-square test. So if we drag across a calculator window, we can put in our 0.295, right? That's what we had. Yep. And so we can square that. Uh, and that gives us a 0 0.087, or in this case, we should expect 87 of 87 individuals in the A1 A1 genotype. Um, if we look at our heterozygote, we should get 0 0.295 times 0 0.705 times 2 equals 0 0.41, make it 0 0.416, and if we take and put in our 0 0.705 squared, we get 0.497, and so that should add up to one, and it does. So now we can if we pull up our output file. So in this case, the output file for this uh, one is going to be a file called hwoutput.csv. And so here's our, our uh, module right here, and here's our output file right below it. Um, so if we hit open on that, we'll get an output file. And because this has multiple generations in it, um, everything's already in, um, because we can go down to, um, and scroll down to, there's a thousand individuals, right? So it's gonna, um, where we should get down to where we were at a thousand, it's going to break. And so then it just puts in, this is the next um, set of things and so on. So you can actually just copy and, you know, subset this if you want an individual thing. And so we'll, we'll do that. And so let's just start at our backup at the top. So if we want to look at that, what we want to do is we want to, um, you can use the shift command to scroll down to our thousand um, and then we can just subset um, that and now we've got just that first the, the setup window here what we're going to be interested in is um, in the output um, we're going to be interested in the number of a1 alleles this is the the value that we're interested in, um, and so a a two a two individual is going to have no a one alleles. A heterozygote a one a two is going to have one, and down here a a one a one individual will have two. So if we go to our analyze or the distribution menu, whichever one you want to use, um, we can now look at our number of a one. And what we should get is a the numbers that match um, where we were before. We got 497, 416, 87. Uh, if we take a look at that, we should be able to see that in our here. We got 87, 416, and 497. Is that right? 87. 416, 497. Now we can test the probabilities that we just calculated here by just typing those in. So the expected were point, amazingly, 0 0.497, 0 0.416, 4, 1, and 0 0.87. Uh, and we're done. Ha! What do you. Oh, did I screw this up? I did. Let's do this again. 
because I, I put them in the wrong places, didn't I? Okay, so as, as expected, because <laughs> they didn't deviate at all uh, in terms of our, our deal that, that it's in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, most of the time it's not going to be that exact, but um, it just happened that way. Um, the other, the, the next thing we'll be interested in, in looking at um, are to look at the effects of dominance and the effect of environmental variability on Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Does those affect it at all? So if we look at it, um, an easy one to look at it here is just to shift, let's go to complete dominance just for um, interest. So when we expect, if we make this dominant, then we expect all these heterozygotes here, this genotype to match up with this one to make the phenotype. So we should only get two bars instead of three. Um, and you'll get, so if we hit set up right, we get two bars and essentially those two. If we went to something like partial dominance, right, we should still get three bars. Um, but it's just going to shift the, the position um, there. So does it, dom does it affect the genotypes at all? No, it doesn't. The genotypes are still exactly as we expected, and they're going to be essentially roughly 90, 420, and, and 490, and that's essentially what we have, and that you would, if you tested this, you would see that it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't significantly differ from, from Hardy-Weinberg. So dominance although it will change the phenotypic fre frequency, doesn't change the genotypic frequencies, and so the expectations are the same. So let's go back off on our dominance, go back to zero here. Let's put in environmental variability and see what happens. We'll just throw in, you know, 0.5. How's that for an answer? Um, hit setup. Once again, now we got this phenotypic almost continuous distribution of phenotypes, but the genotypes are still in the same manner so that, you know, there's all kinds of phenotypic variance here, variability, um, and, but the genotypes are the same and it's, it's basically, this one's a little bit more deviant, but it would not be significantly different probably if you tested it to 79, um, 416, and just because of the size of the population. Um, so those are uh, looking at some of the basics of um, just testing for Hardy-Weinberg and looking at changes that we expect to happen in uh, differences amongst uh, alleles um, and how they interact.